welcome, and we are so glad that you came. The first thing I want to do is acknowledge and give some special thanks to the hardworking reunion committee. Now, I want everybody that was on the committee to stand up. Stand up, committee members. If I have to call your name, I will. Stand up to give them all a big round of applause. Quizzy, one day Brian Goat said, if this is your quizzy, 
I'd like to see your testes. <laughs> <laughs> she was kicked out of Mr. Homer. <laughs> Leanne told me the story that she was sitting there one day and Mr. Homer was sitting, standing in front of her and she noticed a little hole in his pants. And for some reason, she took her finger <laughs> and she stuck it in that hole. And he turned around and looked at her and she was so embarrassed. And he was like, and that was that. No more was that about that. <laughs> what about Mr. Clark? I'm sure that we all have a story about this Mr. Clark. Doug, Hadley has the best story. He was telling about a student who fell asleep in the back of Mr. Clark's class. And Mr. Clark just stopped talking. He walked over to the back of the class. He picked up the kids by the lapel and threw them against the wall. And he was asleep. He just fell right down. <laughs> then Mr. Clark picked him up again and threw him out of the classroom. And all the students were mortified. You can just imagine. And nobody said another word about it. Nobody talked about it. Nobody ever breathed a word about it. And that was that. On the other hand, Nancy this little Merrick was late to his class every single day, and he never said a word. <laughs> what is up with that? Um, Steve Krogh had an interesting story about he and Mr. Farron. Mr. Farron was the principal, and they were at a basketball game in Idaho Falls, and we were losing, and Steve didn't like the calls that the refs were making. They were being very, very unfair, and Steve was getting very vocal about it. I was kind of shocked at that, but he was getting very vocal and loud about it. And the pep club was also getting a little upset and vocal about it, and somebody in the pep club grabbed a cup of ice and threw it out on the gym floor. Well, that brought Mr. Farron up out of his seat, and he's walking down towards the pep club, and Steve is sitting next to the pep club. Of course, he was sitting next to the pep club. <laughs> and um, he um, was yell still yelling at the ref, even when he saw Mr. Farron walking by. Mr. Farron grabbed him by the lapel, said, you sit down and shut up. And and Steve stood back up and said, no, those refs are making bad calls. It's not right. And he grabbed him and he stood back up and he said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. They're not going to win anyway, so I'm just leaving. And Mr. Barron picked him up again, sat him down again, and said, you sit down and shut up. And Steve at that point realized he was talking to the principal. <laughs> because his eyes were glazed over because they were losing before and the ref was making bad calls. So he sat down and shut up at that point and then Mr. Fair turned around and went back to his seat and so whoever threw that glass of ice was very grateful to see because <laughs> they didn't have to hear the end of that. So anyway, and I remember my experience was having to um, take my excuse down to my absent note down to Mr. Hager after missing a day of school and uh, praying that he couldn't tell that I wrote it. <laughs> and he would look at the note, and he would look at me, and he would look at the note, and he would look at me, and then he would give me a pass. And I was so stressed that whole time. And I really think that that helped me to deal with the stress in my life.
<laughs> living through this stress in high school. Um, we had some really great times in high school, and I think that we're so fortunate for that. We have many talented people in our class, and one of them is Steve Jaeger. Steve, will you stand up? Okay. Steve Jaeger made this in Woodshop. He designed it and he put it together and he made this. And this has been hanging in our high school for 50 years. And yeah, they just took it down, I think, the beginning of the year because they needed to add more trophy cases where this was hanging. But they had been in the office by the principal. And when um, Le Leanne went to the school, we went to the school to find out where it was because we wanted to make sure that it was being well cared for. And if they didn't want it, we were going to get it back. And he said, no, we want that. We're not giving it back. So they let us take it for tonight, and they want it back, and they're going to find a proper place to hang Steve Jaeger's class of 1969. So we're very proud of that, and we're very proud of you, Steve. Thank you. He should sign the back of that. He should, yeah. We'll make sure. We are planning to take Steve's picture with this and make a plaque so that it can hang next to this so everybody knows forever who made it and where it came from. Because up to this point, no one has known that. <coughs> $15,000, a new car was $3,000, Nixon was the president, 350,000 rock and roll fans attended Woodstock, and that's what we're, uh, the theme of our night is, and I hope everybody takes advantage of having their picture taken in that Volkswagen bus back there, because that was really the beginning of all the rock and roll festivals that's going on in the world today. And that was really something to be um, alive and a part and young of that generation that that happened. We were watching Rowan and Martin laugh in Family Fair, Smoke, Gun Smoke, and Bonanza on TV. Man set foot on the moon. We were circling Humpy's Dump. <laughs> and we were dancing our little hearts out at Mango. Most of us were on our own after high school. Or if we went to college, we worked a couple of jobs. I doubt that many of us lived in our parents' basement until we were 30. <laughs> we were a pretty self-sufficient group. All the members of this class of 1969 went on to accomplish many great things. It was amazing to me that what we have created and been responsible for in our own little corners of the world. We have raised families and served our communities. We've run for elected office. We've been successful in our chosen fields of work. We have served in the military. In fact, if you have served in the military, stand up.
the lives of so many who have benefited from the fact that we grew up in Blackfoot, Idaho and graduated with the class of 1969. We've been up and we've been down and most of us are still standing. I love high school reunions because you can't hug a friend on Facebook. A lot has changed and who, uh, who we were then is not who we are now. And the same is true for everyone in this room.